A great thing about the gaming industry these days is the slew of JRPGs that were exclusive to Japan on an initial release years ago that are now being translated and brought to the West. This time it's Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero. Released in 2010 for the PSP, this is yet another story set in the Trails universe. But is it a trail blazer or worth zero of your time? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. This game is set three months after the end of Trails in the Sky the Third, which will go over the heads of those who haven't played that particular game of course, but what you need to know is that this game sees Lloyd Bannings, a rookie police detective, returning to his hometown of Crossbell after being assigned to the special support section. In this branch of the city's police department he teams up with Ellie McDowell, heiress to a political dynasty, Randy Orlando, a laid-back ex-soldier, and lastly the young but incredibly bright Tio Plato. Ultimately, the plot revolves around the team investigating the schemes of the city's competing crime syndicate before stumbling over the plot of a centuries-old cult. Whilst I didn't feel the story itself was necessarily of a high standard, the rapport between the characters did draw my attention, albeit some of the conversations went on for a bit too long in my opinion. So gameplay wise this is an isometric turn based RPG that mainly takes place in the city of Crossbell. Each chapter sees the group carrying out different quests which are done under the guise of police investigations. This was a clever if not superficial way to make your role as the officer of the law feel genuine. There will be times when you'll discuss and break down different theories during each investigation with your team which in turn makes them feel more than just extra characters that follow the protagonist about. I did find completing the quest slightly confusing at first as seeing it to the very end did not offer the player a reward there and then. You would receive a quest, carry it out, complete it and return to the quest giver but then you must return to the SSS building and report it to headquarters who would then officially tick the quest as finished. This makes sense somewhat in the context of the story but owing to how we are mostly spoilt by new games that would have you carry out such an action much more swiftly it is easy to forget that this game originally released on the PSP in Japan 12 years ago. Combat is initiated when the controlled character comes into contact with the enemy on the map screen and because of this you can of course see the enemies and avoid them too. There is the element of a surprise attack if either party leaps from behind giving them an advantage. Battling is pretty robust with content and each team member will wield their own weapon. Battles are turn based and may require to either attack or move closer to the enemy in order to land a hit. As is to be expected, there are also magic attacks that can be performed although they require one turn to cast. An interesting mechanic was the implementation of quartz and crafts. Simply put, crafts are specific skills that each character has and these vary from offensive to supportive moves and can be performed once there is enough CP which is accumulated as you take damage and fight. Arts are the game's version of magic and work in unison with the quartz collected in the game. Each party member will carry an orbment which is a device used to store quartz and can carry out magic spells. This system is somewhat akin to equipping Jin in Golden Sun or how Materia works in the Final Fantasy series where the higher the number of an element the greater the spells. Each of your party members favours one of the four elements but they can equip any of the eight available. The controls and the quality of life features added to this version of the game really do help the pacing and enjoyment. The message log can be opened by pressing the ZR button which can help with keeping up with conversations or even what item you last picked up. Add to that the high speed mode which is a great feature to add to an RPG especially since they are the most time consuming games to play and some may not have the time these days. I felt that the normal game speed was a tad slow so I pretty much used this quality of life feature which goes well with the aforementioned message log in case you skip the vast sections of the narrative. The X button brings up your notebook, cooking recipes, fishing journal and combat log and this is helpful especially when attempting to track a quest down. In terms of the drawbacks of this title there are but a few, mainly the amount of dialogue can become tiresome quite quickly and there is a lot of it once it starts. The constant back and forth during quests also detracts from the experience slightly and having to look at my notebook to see where I needed to go next made some quests feel more of a chore. It may have simply eluded me but a quest marker on the map would have remedied this minor inconvenience. For what's on offer though it's a game that has held up very well and gameplay scores 17 out of 20. 
controls work very well, and the few quality of life features are a welcome addition, and they score 18 out of 20. Visually, the game has had a slight uplift, which makes the isometric, sharp-edged world a true joy to look at. It still retains the elements of the original assets, but even the character models have been rendered in such a way that they almost look like porcelain chibi versions of themselves. There are some anime cutscenes which elevate the presentation of the story, and the menus and text size are decent. The best was seeing your party carry out their special attacks, and the dramatic stances that they pull off whilst doing so. I encountered no frame drops or bugs at all during my playthrough. The soundtrack has a number of good songs, typical of JRPGs, with high octane rock and organ duo battle themes to more jazzy, laid back themes when walking down the back alleys. Best of all, the game has Japanese voice acting, albeit I'm unable to understand anything they are saying, but it does help flesh out the cast even more. Some may have preferred this game to have had an English dubbing, but considering this can be a bit hit and miss, personally I'm quite glad they stuck with the Japanese. Visuals are crisp and bright and set a great scene and they get 18 out of 20. Audio is of a similarly high standard and also scores 18 out of 20. Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero costs £35.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. A physical version is available but chances are they are in a low supply which will mean that the price will not go down for a while if at all. As the game stands it's a pretty polished product with plenty to do and discover with over 40 hours of gameplay and a new game plus feature as well. It is still however a 12 year old game with a somewhat antiquated backtracking quest system but it is a fun experience nonetheless plus the minor quality of life improvements as mentioned earlier really do help to bring the game up to the modern day. Value scores 16 out of 20. To conclude, NIS and Falcom have really brought over a great game from their archive. The quality of life improvements and visual upgrades help in delivering a tale of four officers of the law cleaning the city of Crossbell and the evil that lurks in its underbelly. The sleuth approach to most of the quests is a welcomed break from tradition and seeing how your team deconstructs each clue in order to get to the bottom of the case does invigorate a tried and tested formula. The somewhat confusing, at least initially, way in which quests are signed off can slow the game down, but regardless, this is a great place to start on your Legend of Heroes saga. Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero gets a switch up score of 87%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A big thank you to Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games who wrote this one for us, please do check out his channel, I will put a link to it in the top pinned comment. Don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to pick up this game or any other for that matter, you can get your eShop cards from our website switchup.gg. You can currently save yourself 10% off of an order by using the code switchup and that lasts until the end of September. And there's also a link down there to play Asia if you are looking to import any games, use the link and then use the code stated to get yourself 5% off of an order from there. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.